We must now move to questions to the Assembly Commission. I call Mr. Ian McRae. Question one. <coughs> Katrina Ruan to answer question one on behalf of the Assembly Commission. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. I'd like to thank the member for his question. August Tashe Egah Lahar Gahri Raglunya, a Hogter de Kualti, August the Irren Nanifigi Chauli. To ruin a commission on Channel Gahri Vra, Jeshka Halahar, Sagov, Sibli and Gavila, Shay Jake. Since 2012, as part of its plans to refresh and upgrade all information technology, equipment and services provided to constituency offices, the Assembly Commission has delivered new facilities such as printers and broadnet, broadband internet and is currently replacing all laptop computers supplied to members and constituency office staff. The Assembly Commission also plans to replace all desktop personal computer equipment in 2016. The reduction of £2 million in the Commission's budget for 2015-16 will obviously impact on services provided to members and a significant reconfiguration of the way the Commission delivers its services is needed. We are still having discussions on our budget uh, reductions and a final paper has to come to the uh, Commission meeting on Wednesday the 18th. I can assure members that I, for my part, will be doing everything I can to protect jobs and I, I, I am sure that all the Commission members will, will join with me in that. McRae for supplement. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And whilst I appreciate that there's many <coughs> budgetary concerns, whether it be the health budget, the education budget, or indeed the assembly budget, um, uh, and we all no doubt have our concerns about all of that, and no doubt the public will be more concerned than the constituency office IT equipment. Um, however, one big aspect of delivering constituency services is the IT provision. So can the um, Assembly Commission ensure that the budget that is in place to um, change the desktop provision, that that will be protected? Well, I, I agree uh, with the member that it's, it is very important that we have the most up-to-date technology to represent our constituents in the way that we should. I, I can't give, at this point, we're in discussions around budget, um, at this point I can't give uh, an absolute assurance that the desktops uh, will be uh, replaced because obviously uh, we have to ensure £2 million is a lot of money out of a budget. And, um, we want to ensure that we, we protect jobs as much as possible, and that that is a priority. And I'm, I, I should state, while I'm speaking here for the Assembly Commission, I'm stating the position, um, my own position in relation to jobs. But I know that other members want to do the same because it's very important. But I will certainly relay um, to the Commission at our meeting on Wednesday uh, the comments made by yourself. Michaela Boyle. Member, how does the Assembly Commission intend to dispose of the old laptops, Gormogat? We have done call on Fragorshin. I thank the member for that question. Thank you, Shane Gamaleshgill, for that question. Um, the successful supplier of the laptops will be responsible for carrying out the disposal of existing laptops in a way that causes minimum disruption to the routine work of the assembly and is in line with the waste electronic and electrical equipment regulations, we 2006. Mr. Mickey Brady. Just ever a though, question two. Well, Judith Cochran to answer on behalf of the uh, Commission. Um, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And if I may, I propose to answer questions two, three, six, and eight together. And perhaps you'll indulge me if I go over um, my two minutes. Um, the Assembly Commission's budget covers a range of different expenditure categories, including members' salaries and allowances, Assembly Secretariat staffing costs, and general administration costs. As a result of the overall budget agreement, the Commission's total budget for 2015-16 was reduced by 5%, equating to a cut of just over £2 million. Approximately 40% of the Commission's total budget 
of £40.7 million relates to costs that are set by the Independent Financial Review Panel and therefore lies outside of the control of the Commission. And this means that the overall reduction of £2 million becomes a bigger challenge as the Commission only has discretion over approximately £24 million of its budget. A cut of this scale will undoubtedly have an impact on the services and activities delivered by the Commission. To deliver these savings in 2015-16 and to continue to absorb any upward inflationary pressures, the Commission recognised that a significant reconfiguration of the way services are provided is required, and to this end a strategic planning initiative was commissioned for 2015-16 and beyond. The initiative has already carried out a detailed review of all activities delivered by the Assembly Secretariat and has prioritised these activities into three broad categories, statutory, essential and important activities. And at its meeting on the 10th of March 2015, the Commission agreed a package of measures to deliver the £2 million savings that are required in the next financial year. These measures include the approximate £220,000 saving from the further reduction of office costs expenditure for members, as stipulated by IFRP, but also includes reductions in payments to political parties under the Financial Assistance for Political Parties scheme, savings in staffing costs through reductions in temporary staffing numbers and hopefully through participation in the public sector voluntary exit scheme, and savings through a wholesale reduction in administrative costs. The Commission remains committed to support the Assembly and its members, but the range and the quality of services and activities that it delivers will have to change. Very first supplementary. I thank the man, uh, member for her answer. Um, our party position is that we would hope that cuts would not necessarily target agency staff who may not have the protection of permanent staff. And what has the Commission done to protect jobs, including agency staff? I um, thank the member for um, his question. Um, in recognition of the fact that the vast majority of services that are provided to members through the staff of the Secretariat, the Commission has sought to deliver efficiencies, first of all, from its non-staffing budgets. However, the extent of the savings required for 2015-16 means that a reduction in staffing of the order of 32 full-time equivalent posts will be required. This reduction will be facilitated partly through participation in the wider public sector voluntary exit scheme which would be only applicable uh, to those staff um, who are uh, on permanent contracts with us. But we will also have to consider a reduction in the use of some of our temporary staff, and we've tried to get a balance between the two on that. Staffing resources will be deployed to ensure that the Commission's statutory and essential functions are maintained. I would like to point out that Secretariat staff and agency staff have displayed commendable flexibility over the recent years um, on the spending review since 2010, and any changes to staffing will be made in consultation with staff and their representatives. Mr. Basil McCray. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, we've talked uh, quite a lot about cuts, but there is a view, a view sometimes that we are isolated from those cuts. Uh, does the Commission feel that the members are going to take their fair share of the pain in this regard? Um, I thank the member um, for his question. Um, and in short, uh, yes, um, we are taking our fair share of the pain. Members' office cost expenditure has already reduced by 9% between 2012-13 and 2014-15 and is going to be reduced by an additional 3% in 15-16, providing some 220,000 of the 2 million savings required. In addition, the Commission has agreed a 25% reduction in the budget for members' office consumables and a reduction of 25,000 in the funding provided to uh, political parties through the FAP scheme. The Commission has also written to the Independent Financial Review Panel to request that childcare scheme options for members are the same as what is on offer to Secretariat staff, and this could yield approximately another 60,000 of savings. And if all of these savings are realised, then over 330,000 of the savings will immediately impact directly on members, and that is before any impact on other services to members is considered. Mr. Roy Beck. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. In the earlier question, the member tried to give the impression he was wanting to protect jobs. Does the Commissioner find that strange, given the fact that he has approved the budget with such a significant reduction? and that a reduction in employment is, is a likely outcome and what lessons have been learned from the previous business efficiency program uh, which can be implemented to try and bring about savings and that such job losses will have to be faced in order to balance your books. 
Uh, and I thank the member for his question, and I'm not going to get drawn into um, a, a political opinion on, on that about um, how the budget was agreed by certain parties, etc. But um, if I could just say that the business efficiency programme um, had been running uh, for a number of years to ensure that the Commission could continue um, to provide the full range of services to members despite the 9% um, cash cut to um, its budget over the, over the past number of years. Um, and the programme identified a number of recommendations um, that have enabled the Commission to reduce admin costs while still maintaining um, staffing at levels that can support members to the best possible extent. Unfortunately, the scale of cuts now going forward means that staffing reductions will be required in the near future. Staff who are employed um, by the Assembly Commission um, are, are public sector employees and they have been entitled to incremental pay rises and inflationary pay rises over the years. So even though we have actually reduced the number of staff, we haven't necessarily um, seen a reduction um, in, in the pay bill, but that is something that is going to have to change going forward. Mr. Sidney Anderson. Principal Deputy Speaker, and uh, I am thankful for the, for the answers thus far. But in relation to budget cuts, can I ask in what areas that the budget cuts are likely to happen? Um, yep, I thank the member um, for, for his question. Um, the, the Commission has a statutory requirement under Section 40 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998 to provide the Assembly or ensure that the Assembly is provided with the property, staff and services required for the Assembly's purposes. And the Strategic Planning Initiative, which I, I mentioned in my original um, answer, has involved extensive work across the Secretariat to prioritise activities into the three broad character, car categories. Statutory, i.e. those activities to deliver statutory functions and obligations to the co of the Commission and associated bodies. Essential, i.e. those activities which are not statutory but are essential to deliver the statutory functions. And important, those activities which are important to the wider work of the Assembly but which are more discretionary in nature. Staffing allocations have been made on the basis of this um, Secretariat-wide prioritisation exercise. However, all areas of the Secretariat will see some reduction in the number of posts. Staffing, allocations deci staffing allocation decisions in future years will be informed by a series of fundamental business reviews to ensure that the core business of the Assembly continues to be supportive effectively. Mr. Alban McGinn. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And, uh, could I ask the Commissioner in relation to the uh, cuts, uh, the cuts have been, it would seem, imposed by the executive on this assembly, which is a very odd thing constitutionally, whenever the executive is accountable to this assembly. Were the cuts imposed by the assembly or were they unilaterally made by the assembly as it should have been? Uh, and will those cuts uh, as presently planned, not damage the capacity of this assembly collectively and individually uh, for assembly members to carry out their work? Um, well, I thank the member um, for his question. And yes, indeed, um, the, the cuts have been imposed on us directly by the executive. Um, however, and I don't necessarily want to defend uh, ministers, uh, but the, um, the Commission did write um, to the Finance Minister and explain that 40% uh, of our budget um, fell outside um, of our, our control. And I think as a result of that engagement, um, perhaps the cut that we received, um, the 5% the cut equating to 2 million, was less than we may have received had we not made that representation. Mr Gregory Campbell. Number four. Call him Ms. Katrina Ryan to answer on behalf of the Commission. Uh, can I thank the member for his question? I guess Gavin Wakas lets him call to some cash. I guess Maria Larek Sulak Nagorchina. I guess on Lee and all work courtyard of Inner Imakti. I call Dean or Harsna. Ni feider la Commission on Channel on Tolis Shaw a Balu the rare Chowley. Is feider le mafak Lee and Nagorchori sna trivlin yerenaka kara fall don koalta. Sivleen Gavi la doyeg, shakto an imi la octo hain kurtjor. Sorry, M Mr. Deputy Speaker, the, there was a very uh, order, and I'm just I'm, I'm answering a question, and I really believe there was totally inappropriate behaviour, and I was waiting for. I'll, I'll ask the member to continue with her question, the, her answer. Sivleen Gavila Agoyeg, Shakto Animila, 
Octohane Courtour, Savleen Gavila. I'd like to ask the Principal Deputy Speaker, is it appropriate that somebody yawns so ignorantly as I'm trying to answer the question? It is not possible. For, I'm not prepared to answer questions ask, in this in ask these Member to resume, ask all, all remarks to be made through the Chair. Ask a member to continue. Well, I've, I've made the point that um, I think it's absolutely inappropriate for the member to be yawning uh, in the way that he has. Savlian Gavila, a three jig. Shak Dumila, three kid. Feha Hocht, Korchor. Savlian Gavila, Kerajig. Shaska Shak Dumila, Nigaid, Feha Ahain, Korchor. Due to the diverse nature of the visits and the vast number of visitors attending an event, a function, or a tour, the Assembly Commission is not able to gather this information broken down per constituency. However, we can provide the member with the total number of visitors for the past three years. In 2012, 79,081 visitors. In 2013, 70,328 visitors. In 2014, 67,921 visitors. August Bay Commission and Channel in on Myondelu, Erlian Omlon Briantel Nkorchori, Er Okoji, Okodili Terras, Terras Nila Falcha, August Clar Ejikas Akar Fald and Kualta Ish Grivin. The Assembly Commission will be able to provide the member in writing the yearly total number of visitor breakdowns for functions, functions with tour, tours with hospitality and education programmes. Is he in a clear education thing? Category Jimakti in the Vedan and Channel and Chowli as our Hani Kurchora Hafid Gabiakt. Education programs are the only. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Principal Deputy Speaker, you're coming for a supplement. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I'm, <clears throat> I just look forward to being uh, uh, told how one can yawn in Irish. I, I don't know how that will work out. But uh, if I could ask the, the uh, Commission member, she outlined the, the various numbers that uh, uh, came to Parliament buildings in the course of each of the three years. What uh, intention would there be in the course of the next 12 months to ensure that numbers are continuing at that high level for the future in order, particularly for young people, to see and get a feeling for what goes on in Parliament buildings? Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And I'll answer the question, but I won't be ignorant and inappropriate as the member was to me. The Assembly Commission has recently approved a new engagement strategy which aims to ensure that the Assembly and its work are accessible to all and communicated widely. The four main objectives of the strategy are to provide accurate and timely information in order to build awareness, understanding and participation with the Assembly, its members and work and the democratic process. To develop and increase digital initiatives to order in order to support all stakeholders to participate, interact and engage with the Assembly. To build partnerships with stakeholders to create and improve engagement opportunities with underrepresented and our hard-to-reach hard groups, build synergies and improve effectiveness, and to increase visitor numbers to Parliament buildings and deliver an excellent visitor experience. Ms. Sandra Overea. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, I wonder can the Minister uh, or can the Commissioner detail how the Assembly proactively reaches out to schools and groups uh, in the furthest away from Parliament buildings in the, in the far west? Well, uh, I thank the member for her uh, question. And um, in terms of education programmes, since 2012, the three most represented constituencies in terms of education programmes are East Belfast 2,787, Upper Ban 2,779, and East Antrim 2,663 pupils. The three constituencies that are least represented are West Tyrone, 626 pupils, North Down, 1,072 pupils, and Strangford, 1,128 pupils. So, you can, so the member can see there's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of distance from the Assembly. But I absolutely take the point. I think it is very important that the Assembly Commission, and I have a full list that I will provide to the member of the numbers going for every coming for schools from every single constituency and it is essential that the Assembly Commission particularly target the constituencies um, that have the least number of uh, children and young people coming up. Mr. Colum Eastwood. 
Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, can I thank the Commissioner for her answers um, thus far. Uh, give, given what we've talked about already, the budget cuts, and given the importance of the outreach in terms of the educational work that's being done by the Assembly, especially the Let's Talk programmes and, and, and things like that, uh, can the, the Commissioner ensure, assure us that those, uh, those things will not be cut and that there will still be a fully fledged educational pro uh, uh, process for our young people to engage with the Assembly? Well, Gao Wakelston called to them Fragger Shin, and I thank the member for that uh, question. Um, and in relation to, as I said, the Assembly Commission has not agreed uh, the final cuts uh, or budget reductions to date. We still have a further discussion to have um, at our meeting on the 18th. And um, what we are trying to do is do everything we can um, to protect uh, frontline services and also uh, jobs. So uh, at this point, I can't give any uh, assurances in relation to any programmes. What I can say is the member can be assured that I certainly will do everything I can to uh, ensure the resources are there to protect frontline services and jobs as far as possible. Mr. Alex Maskey. I get brief last on Kulia. Uh, thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the, uh, the member what plans does the Commission have to increase visits from women's groups, ethnic minorities, and the LGBT community? Well, I'd like to thank the member for, for that question, and I have to say it's a question I'm very close to my own uh, concerns. Um, as the members in this chamber will know, we uh, recently did the ERC report, and obviously. The Assembly Commission will be examining very carefully um, the Assembly and Executive Review uh, report in relation to women in politics and, and how we ensure broader gender representation. Also, um, at our next meeting of the Assembly Commission, we, we will be uh, just looking at the issue of the Gender Action Plan. And the member will be aware that the Speaker recently hosted a very successful event for um, International Women's Day. And indeed, this building was lit up purple to celebrate uh, women. And we will be doing everything we can to broaden the number of visitors and also the number of people uh, in this chamber who are uh, women. In terms of the LGBT community, um, as part of the outreach strategy, and I was the person who chaired that strategy, um, we ensured that uh, sexual orientation is one of the key areas of outreach for us, and we're currently in the, the, that's out for EQIA, um, and that will be one of the areas that we're looking at. And also, in terms of ethnic minorities, we value greatly the contribution that our ethnic minorities make to our society here in this part of Ireland, and we will be doing everything to ensure that our um, institution reflects the diverse nature of our society. Mr. Jerry Kelly. Question five, please. I call Mr. Peter Weir to answer on behalf Thank of the you. Commission. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Principal Speaker. And with permission, I'll uh, answer both questions five and seven. Uh, perhaps we have a, a question here which can generate more light than heat uh, for once. Uh, the external lighting system is due to be installed in May 2015 and will have the ability to colour wash the facade of Parliament buildings in a single colour. In the meantime, the colour wash of the facade is provided by uh, hand-fitted colour gels, which is sort of done on, on one-off basis. Uh, at the meeting on the 11th of November 2014, the Assembly Commission agreed the policy for the external lighting of Parliament buildings in order to manage the use of this system while preserving the dignity of Parliament buildings. In line with the, uh, the policy, the Commission uh, has scheduled uh, up to four days during the calendar year uh, for events of its choice. And in 2015, the four days that have been chosen by the Assembly Commission are Monday the 9th of March, uh, International Women's Day, Purple, Tuesday the, 12th of, sorry, Tuesday the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day, Green, Sunday the 12th of July, Orange, and Wednesday the 11th of November, Remembrance Day, Red. Again, in light with this policy, the Commission will permit its Charity of the Year, which this year is currently the, the Simon Community, up to five days during a 12-month period, as well as granting up to a maximum of another eight days for other events during the calendar year. Mr. Kelly, for supplement. Gorm Wiggins, Leighton Ball, and uh, Fred Rubisha. Thank you, Member, for his uh, answer up till now. As, as he knows, um, Pride is also uh, an internationally celebrated uh, um, day, and especially uh, 
uh, in Belfast here. Is there any consideration being given to uh, Pride, uh, a lighting of the, the uh, external lights on Pride Day? What we've agreed as a commission, it was agreed unanimously, was four specific days during the year. That's in light with the policy, and, and we've agreed that. Um, from that point of view, there is a, a system which allows consideration of other days, again, by way of a consensus um, in connection with that. So at the moment, I think the answer is basically there are four days that have been agreed and agreed unanimously. That's what's agreed so far. Mr. Trevor Long. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, could I ask the member and thank him for his answer so far? Uh, who, who can apply to have the facade lit up, and what would be the process for such an application in the future? Thank you, thank you, the member for it. In light with the policy, it's only events that are organised to Parliament buildings or in the estate, which are DFP approved, will have access to the lighting system. Uh, it's restricted to only charitable, community, or non-profit organisations, based having a significant contribution <coughs> of Northern Ireland. Uh, celebrating a significant anniversary or occasion are permitted to have Parliament buildings illustrated in a particular colour. In terms of application, <coughs> organisations wishing to use the facilities will apply for the use of the facility directly to the events office, uh, in line with both this policy and the events policy. Then the organisers will be asked to seek a triple signature sponsorship, as they would with any other event, from members showing cross-designation support. Requests should then be forwarded to the events office, who will seek approval from the Assembly Commission no less than two calendar months before the event taking place. And that, again, in line with the policy, would be agreed with by way of uh, consensus. I, I would also indicate that in terms of the, the eight days, that can also be where there is, also will include where there is something that is particularly significant to Northern Ireland. So, I suppose to choose an example from a previous occasion, if we had had the, the Giro this year, that would be something that could be considered by the Commission uh, for a specific day within that envelope of, of eight days. I think the, the aim is to try to, what is quite a, a special event in terms of that, is to, uh, to light up Parliament buildings without it becoming something which simply happens on a casual basis and then loses its, its significance. Well, Mr. Sean Rogers. Hey, Mr. Prince, Deputy Speaker, and I certainly welcome this, this and I know there will be a certain amount of PR associated with it, but how will we encourage uh, other groups in the future to, to use this facility? Again, it's up to individual members, as, as indicated in terms of the process. It fits certain criteria and would then be an application through the, the events office. I think from experience elsewhere, there may be more an argument that, that we may left, be left with a situation in which there's maybe more groups applying than there, uh, than there are actually days available. But I think, um, to be honest on that side of it, it, it's therefore about striking a balance as where the, the, the policy is. And from that point of view, there is no point in having a building which every day of the week is lit up a different, different colour, because then I think it tends to lose the, the special significance of it. Uh, so from that point of view, it's up to any individual member to encourage whatever groups they want to, to apply. And it would then have to fit the criteria and meet the, the, clear the various hurdles before it could be agreed. Mr. Jim Mollister. What are the initial capital costs to enable this uh, programme to proceed? The initial capital co uh, costs, I'm glad the member asked that, it was part of the overall roof project and it was budgeted for within the roof project. The overall initial costs, in fact, the overall capital costs full stop are £95,000, which is part of a, I think it was about a £4 million <coughs> project in terms of the, the roof in, incorporated within that. Uh, what that does mean, while there's one initial capital cost, up until now, where there's been requests from groups who have been facilitated, there's been an individual cost each time whenever it's been brought forward. This is effectively will then operate as a one-off cost. Mr. Trevor Clark. Mr. Uh, Sam question, Gardner. Sorry, question number nine. Mr. Sam Gardner will answer on behalf of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and uh, I thank Mr. Clark for his question. Uh, there is currently a review of this aspect of the scheme which is coming to a close. Members will be informed of the outcome of this review shortly. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, can I thank uh, the member for his answer? However, it didn't actually answer the question I had submitted. However, given there is a review, in terms of the review, can I ask the Commission member, has consideration been given to the fact that each of the government departments opens its scheme 12 months a year, and yet no employees of the Assembly is only eligible to apply for it once a year? 
it was looked at before accepted during February and March. That's slightly changed. This is the first time it's come to change. So if you bear with us, you, you, you'll probably maybe see a change coming about. Order. Time is up.